Hello, this is Sean Brown from SCCS and in this second part we are going to be again looking at the offset and recalculation functions but in this example um, we'll be looking at false steps that have been introduced into your data and how to go about removing those and the options that you have. So if we go into this project, again we're just going to look at one node in particular but you may have several nodes in which you can repeat the process I'm about to show you. So if we look at node track underscore 003 and in particular the A axis you can see the current resultant value is 4. Now for instance I may have, uh, have had a warning and so I know there's a particular issue with this node. So if I click on the actual value and I look at the data, you can see here that obviously I've had the data around zero initially. Something has occurred at that timestamp and the current resultant value is now being read at four. So that could be uh, a knock to the tilt meter and I've decided that that is a full step which I'd like to remove from my data set. So in this example, make a note of that value and this will be determined the required resultant value. And at the same time, make a note of the epoch or time interval that that step took place. Also, while you're on this graph, you can have a look at the current resultant value and make a note of that value as a you see it at present. So what we're going to do first is we're going to move the current resultant value back down to the resultant value before the step took place. Now to do that, we go setup, offset and ref ID. We look at the node of interest and here you can see the raw value that was set as the null displacement value. Again, make a note of that value. So now I've taken you forward into a simple Excel sheet, which again, I'm using just to calculate the offset. Uh, the offset is the resultant value plus the raw value minus the required resultant value. So the current resultant value we just had a look after the step was this value. The raw value, which we're using as the null reference, is this one and we require the resultant value or the uh, reading before the step took place to revert back to this reading you see here. And this then calculates the offset that needs to be applied. So now I'll go back to the Wizen platform. So here I am back in the Wizen platform in offset and ref ID. And you can see on the A axis, I'm now gonna enter in the offset value I just calculated. Now you may have the same step on the A and the B axis, so you can do those both at the same time, but in this example, I'm just gonna do the A axis initially. I click save and you can see that change is just being applied to the A axis. And this is the resultant offset I'm looking to apply. Click confirm, that's okay. Go to data, show table. And obviously here, the page is not being refreshed, so just give that a minute. Okay, the page is refreshed now, and if we look at the A value, you can see this has reverted back to the, this, the resultant value before we had the false step. But if I click into the actual value itself, you can see that the data was reverted back to the resultant, but I've got a time period of data where I have a false step. So the process now is to remove that false step. So first of all, go back to the epoch where the step took place and make a note of that time interval. And again, obviously, go forward in time where you have that time interval where you're looking to make a note of that time just before the offset took place. 
Okay, so now we have the time period for which the step took place. We now go to setup, recalculation, find the node we're interested in, expand, add calculation. Okay, first of all, I want to put the timestamp in for which the false displacement took place. So, making a note of the times I had earlier, this was at 19, 06, 00. And the step took place just after 17, 55, 00. So here you have the wall values for which the current um, offset is related to the zero. So in other words, if I was to press calculate, the, that block of data would be shifted to exactly a zero value. But what I'm doing now is I'm looking to move the data to the value that was in place before the step took place. So again, I'm reverting you to an Excel sheet here just to give you uh, an understanding of what I'm doing um, in relation to the screen you've just previously seen. So here I'm trying to work out the offset, which is the raw value minus the required resultant value. So a minute ago, you were seeing the raw value as 0.4468. And if I'd utilized that, the data would have been shifted down to a zero reference but I'm looking to align it to the previous reading before the step took place. So my required resultant value I've entered there. This then calculates the offset that I'm going to enter back into the Wizen platform. So here I am back in the Wizen platform and I'm going to enter in the value I've just shown you, which is minus 0 0.430. So and once I've entered all my parameters, I press calculate. Shouldn't take too long. There's 91 observations that need to calculate, and that's just finished that calculation. So I go back to data, show table. I click on the axis and the node I'm interested in. And I knew that the Reading was fairly recent, so you can see the time interval I'm looking at, and that associated step in the data has been removed. Please make a note of the access range as it's quite important to realize that the large step has been removed, and here are very small interval readings or angular differences. Now, one thing I think I'll do in this same video here is just to show you that if, for instance, you had a laser distance meter, something blocked the observation sight line for a period of time, it would obviously then revert back to its previous reading and you may have a spurious spike. The same with the tilt meter, um, but less likely in that if it took a knock, it would remain in its new position. But you have the capability in the Wizen platform to hide data. So this does not delete the data, it hides the data. Now we're just gonna do this in an example. So for instance, I wasn't happy with this result. I could click, I could right click on the point, click confirm, and you'll see that that point has now been hidden. And if I was to click this box here, you can see the bad point that I decided was an outlier. And if I click that box, you can see it's removed again. That concludes the offset and recalculation functions in Wizen.